John T. Wilder has yeah. won his arbitration case against Tyson Fury. Yep. And that rules that a, a trilogy fight has got to take place by September the 15th. They fought twice and now they've got to fight yep. for a third time. So what is that? Is that the nail in the coffin for Fury Joshua? This mega fight that's now due to take place, or certainly we thought, on August the 14th. Frank Warren, of course, is wrapped up in this whole event, Joshua Fury, wrapped up in it in an enormous way. We spoke to, to Frank just before we came on air and said, Frank, what is going on? Where does this leave August the 14th? And what is going on behind the scenes? We're hoping that we can come to some accommodation. We started talks and hoping to be an accommodation to met with Wilder's side, which will enable Tyson and AJ to get it on. If not, then Tyson will have to fight uh, Wilder. That is the, the bottom line of all of it. So how do you resolve the Wilder aspect of it? I suppose, do you pay him some kind of fee? Well, I think, you know, there have to be some consideration and obviously if we can get to some sort of solution and he agrees to it, the benefit to Wilder is if Tyson wins the fight against AJ, instead of fighting just for the WBC belt, he'd be fighting for four belts. Frank, it begs the question, why were the negotiations taking place for Fury and Joshua while this arbitration ruling was going on in the background? Well, because uh, the lawyers in the States were very confident they were going to win the case. And I suppose the, the same as applied to the other side. But the, the negotiations are going on. A lot of announcements being made. And I think, I don't know how many times I've been on the show, Jim, and I've always said to you all along, until it's all signed up and ready to go, it ain't on. You know, there was a lot of movement over the weekend with Prince Khalid in uh, in Saudi Arabia. And he was uh, he spoke to Tyson Direct. And, and that's led to us all believing that we were, you know, not a, a proper official announcement once uh, all the agreements have been signed off. But that's now a problem and we've got to deal with it. Frank, you've been through these situations many times before. What, what's your gut feeling in this? Are we going to see Joshua Fury? I hope so. If, look, if Tyson has to fight Wilder, then that fight will get delayed. And I think it'll go on later. I, can, I really fancy Tyson to beat Wilder and it will go on later. But we want it to go on straight away. That's the fight everybody wants to see. We want to see the two big British guys in the ring facing each other. That's what we're all working hard and have been working very hard to try and make happen. But in this situation, Frank, just to finish with, are the cards very much held by Deontay Wilder and his people? He's in a very good position at the moment, but that's what negotiation and talking is all about, to try and re resolve it. You know, problems are there to be solved. So, um, Frank Warner is part of uh, the Fury promotion, of course. He's saying, yes, yeah, sure, Wilder is in a strong position because he has won this arbitration case against Fury and that rules that a trilogy fight has got to take place. Simon, I think it's all down to money now, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's always been about money and it will always be about money. And we've sat here, the irony of it is we've been sat here talking about how much they're going to get out of this fight and how much they're entitled to get out of this fight and how much the pay-per-view should be. And it's all about money and it's all about the facility fee and it's all about this. So it's ironic that it's a little bit of a contract that he signed somewhere else has come back to bite him. With the best one in the world, with Frank, first of all, I thought this was the case and I said to Frank last year or the beginning of this year, but if they've got a contract, why would it have a drop-dead date on it? It has a completion, i.e. you've got a complete, all this has got to be rescinded. So I was always in the camp that I wonder if this is going to come back and bite them. But on the flip side of it, you know, the notion that Frank is now advancing is that this two-fight deal that was apparently going to have with Joshua and Fury may not be a two-fight deal. The way around it might be that whoever wins this fight, if it's Fury, he takes four belts to fight Deontay Wilder with. So Frank's automatically almost discounted in the conversation that there'll be another fight with Anthony Joshua. <laughs> Wilder... You know, he got beaten. He got beaten badly. He doesn't really want to fight Tyson Fury. If Tyson Fury kicks back 10 million quid or 15 million quid or some outrageous sum for Wilder to step aside, and then there is a situation where Wilder can fight the winner of that fight, this is what will cure it. Frank is sitting there playing devil's advocates. I'm sure if you've had a judgment against you, why wouldn't you appeal that judgment? Because you can kick it back into the long grass again if you want to. Yeah, true. You've got an arbitration that said, actually, our version of events is that this is actually a contract you have to stick to, which I thought was going to happen with the best one in the world to Frank. You know, your lawyers thought you were going to win. Well, you didn't. And it must have been pretty nip and tuck. And it was always going to be 50-50. If you've lost the case, it wasn't because you were a 90-10 in favourite. You don't have these outcomes where you're really absolutely 
dialed in, you're going to win it. It probably was always in the balance. Yeah. So probably that's why we had so many problems with Fury signing the contract because he realises I've got a pony up, a big part of my purse to get rid of this bloody pest that I beat up a year ago. <laughs> That's exactly well, it what is, it comes it? down to. Yeah. And it's our understanding this morning that uh, individuals representing the Saudis are going to be talking to, to Eddie Hearn today in a bid to, to accelerate the pace to getting this sorted. And the getting it sorted, as you rightly say, well, to be as, you, to, as to use your words, pony up. They'll need to <laughs> chuck a bunch of money at Wilder yep. and say, "Look, take that, go away, but, and shut up." But you know, there's a part of me that actually quite pleased about this that they can't just monopolize the heavyweight division and sit there going, "We'll have two fights. Maybe we'll have three. Maybe we'll fight when we feel like it, right?" And everyone else can stand in line and whistle, right? So you know, Dylan White can whistle, Joe Joyce can whistle, Usyk can whistle, and they're getting some of their own medicine now. They signed a contract. They've got to get on with it. Poor people like Dylan White that lost his position after losing Povetkin last year are back at the table waiting for the great Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury to make £100 million each and then fight again and keep on fighting until they've made enough money. So this will be guaranteed that this will be cleared up. And the only way it will be cleared up is if, if, Fury, if Fury sits there. I suspect he'll have people that are influencing him in his ear saying, sorry, Tyson, you're a big boy. You and your management team signed an obligation. You're going to have to pay a big slug of the purse that you're getting from Anthony Joshua because nothing to do with Anthony Joshua, it's to do with you. Yeah. Anthony Joshua's not going to lose any of his fight purse. Right? They'll try and get some back off Joshua and he'll go, go whistle. It's not my problem, it's yours. Yeah. And this will be about the economics of it. So I'd be really surprised if the fight on August the 14th doesn't go on and I would be less surprised if Deontay Wilder doesn't come around with a big bag of swag and nip, nip off like Ronald McDonald, Ronald McDonald the burglar with but, a big bag of money. But does he, does he run, run off into the distance with the money or does he frustrate them, Wilder? Well, there's no benefit in that. There's no benefit in that. And also, if you if you frustrate them, the WBC are in on this. The WBC have sanctioned this fight. So they've now got to unsanction it. So where are they in all the mix? Because it's their belt. The only leverage he's got. So you say, right, or what? So Deontay Wilder does what? He's got a judgment which says they've got to fight by September the 15th. Or what? Or what? <laughs> or, or what? I'm going to come around and blow a raspberry at you. Or I'm going to be able to stymie your fight. <laughs> So, or what? And the, the or what will be, what's the remedy? What's the remedy? The WBC strip Fury of his belt. They wouldn't dare. No. They won't dare. So it would be a financial settlement. I can only imagine, Simon, that Tyson Fury went on social media at the weekend saying, right, it's all done. It's August the 14th. I cannot wait to get my hands on Joshua and I will absolutely blast him to kingdom come, thinking that Wilder would lose the arbitration, arbitration no, case. I, I think I think there's a distinct possibility that they, they knew there was a good chance they were going to win it. Frank Warren is not going to come on a, on a radio show and say, I'm going to lose this, is he? He's not going to preempt and pre and, and give the, the the arbitration panel an opportunity to make a decision. He's going to sit there and say, "We're going to win this. It's a done deal. We're going to move on." Right? Deontay Wilder is a is background noise. He's been beat, mm. and unfortunately, because of with respect, probably not the greatest of business. He's still in the mix because they started a three-fight deal with Wilder. And yeah. they, they, you know, I understand why they did it, because the first fight was a draw. Fury was coming back into the mix as, as somebody that was on the periphery. The second fight was compelling. We don't really need to see a third fight, because we're going to see a third fight no. where Fury hands him his backside again. All right? So we don't really need to see that. We want to see Joshua Fury. So Wilder's in the mix going, I tell you what, I ain't even got a fight. And I can get a big bag of money, but what I can be is aggravation value. And the yeah. more aggravation I am, the bigger paycheck I can get. That's the kind of boxer I'd like to be. You never absolutely. put on the gloves, but they give you a bunch a of money. Absolutely. Mickey's actually nailed it, Simon. Surely Fury's team should have dealt with the Wilder situation ages ago. Two men, Warren and Aram, have been in the sport for years. This is poor form. Well, it's not the greatest of form, but the bottom line is, if someone is going to get into Tyson's ear and say, you're going to have to take a pill you're going to have to pay this guy for doing nothing. Yeah. And that's what's going to have to happen because we put ourselves in the cart. Or, I tell you what, why don't, you, why don't we appeal this and see if there's an appeal mechanism and kick it back into the long grass and let him whistle until next year. Sure. Like we've had to whistle for the last six months. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.